The older types, ISA, MCA, or EISA, affect the speed at which our system can effectively process video information. These early systems had data speed 8.33 MHz to 10 MHz, which is a limited level of speed. So enter the VESA local bus, or VL bus. The VL bus processes 32 bits of data at a time, and at the full rated speed of the CPU, up to 40 MHz. Thus we can achieve blinding speeds by using the VL bus in our system. The PCI video cards, like the VL bus cards, combine the speed of a local bus with the microprocessor to increase video performance dramatically. The PCI video cards are the most widely used video cards because of their increased performance. Intel developed the graphics only bus that makes quick work of even the most demanding 3D, video, and 2D graphics. The AGP bus, along with new dedicated card slots, moves the PC graphics off the busy PCI bus and gives the graphics data its own fast lane to the processor. This increase in access to the processor provides significant benefits to 3D games, titles, and applications that have been designed to exploit this feature. With the specifications varying from different SVGA vendors, it's near impossible to define all the criteria for these cards. We'll explore some standards that will help us to determine the best possible adapter for the applications we run. One consideration for purchasing a new video card is the amount of memory required to display a particular resolution and the color depth. We can use the following formula for determining the minimum memory requirements for any resolution and color depth for our monitor. We'll use the following formula for a monitor requiring the screen resolution to be 800 by 600 and to display high color 16 bit. We simply multiply the screen resolution. 800 by 600 equals 480,000 dots on the screen. Then we multiply the 480,000 dots by the bits per dot. 16 equals 7,680,000 bits. Next, we divide the bits, 7,680,000 by 8 equals 960,000 bytes. So we would need at least 960,000 bytes, or 937.5K, of memory. But since memory is only in multiples of 256K, we need at least 1 megabyte, or 1,024 kilobytes of video memory. Another consideration is the processor or chipset. The chipset is the heart of any video card and essentially defines that card and its functions. We want to purchase a card containing the accelerator chipset or the coprocessor chipset. And if we play a lot of three-dimensional games, a card with a 3D chipset would increase our video performance. We want to purchase a card with one of these types of chipset or the video performance will be greatly reduced. Video cards range in price dramatically. For example, we can purchase a video card with 2 megabytes DRAM and an accelerator chipset for about $50. While we can purchase an 8 megabyte PCI 3D chipset video card for $275. So if we want speed and performance for our home PC, we'll have to pay for it. We've purchased a new video card. Now we're going to remove the old video card and install the new one. First, we unplug all cables and remove the case cover from the chassis. Now to remove any ESD, 